Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God, God's word, direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? Now, there's a new way to pay your electricity bill. Quick pay. Quick pay your bills today. Quick pay. It's a whole new way. Online, online, pay your bill one time. If there is a whole new way to quick pay for your electricity. Yes, they made it easy. Just enter your uncle number. Four clicks and it's over. Introducing Quick Pay, a new service from the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission that lets you pay your bill online with your credit or visa debit chip card. Just enter the account number and contact information. Click pay and you're done. Share the line. Share the line. History 919 FM on Facebook and Instagram. Share the line. Iowa George on Instagram. Share the line. Iowa TV and Street Street TV on YouTube. Share the line. The Street 919 FM. This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God, God's word, direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah. And any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, break into the host of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God, God's word, direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? National ministry. It's the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy from your ministry. Bless your name today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. If in case you want to keep this broadcast with me at any time, you need to go to any first citizens bank. And your account number is 149-1461. 149-1461. need to get a copy of any of my books. Two of them, Lo, I'm with you always. Very large and irrevocable substitutes. On Testimonial Boulevard, we go to Jamal, watch a pair, jewelry shop. It's downstairs, down Center Mall on Frederick Street. Hallelujah, it's a good mall to Shark and Street side. Then you have Ellis Enterprises. Uh, this is at 14 First Street and San Juan. Hallelujah. If you get any of those books, the Ellis Enterprises. And then you have Auntie Peace. Restaurant, one b Rail Street, just by the wider and the crazy. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And for those of you in South, you can go to my Anatomy Bookshop and you can pick up any one of those books there at affordable prices in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our text today is coming from the book of Isaiah. So 
chapter 1. Hallelujah. I'm going to take it from verse 11. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says the Lord? I've had enough of burnt offerings, of rams, and the fat of fed, fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls, or of lambs, or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my corpse? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moon, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies. I cannot enjoy iniquity on the sacred meeting. Your new moon and your appointed peace, my soul hate. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hand, I will hide my face from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, you shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, this shall be as well. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, God is on the war path. It's not a nice thing when God is on the war path. Nations tremble. Individuals can I catch the breath. Right now, God is on the war path. For the whole world. He wants to bring man. He wants to shock man back to reality. God is saying, The multitude of your sacrifices. He says, I have had enough. Enough of burnt offerings. Enough of the fed cattle. He is saying today, I do not delight in bulls, the blood of bulls. Who have lambs or goats. This is God talking to He says, when you come to appear before him, 
bring no more future sacrifices. Incense, he says, is an abomination to him. Your new moons, your Sabbaths, the call in our assemblies, your functions. God is saying, I cannot endure iniquity and the secret meaning. He says, Your new moons are your appointed peace. My soul is, this is God talking. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of hearing them. You see, when you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make <laughs> many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. I tell you, what God is saying, so many people, hook up to religion, and they actually believe The blood of boys and goats. They actually believe incense. They believe sacrifices in general. Could atone for sin. God is saying to us today, He's shut up of it. He's weary of it. I remember them when Solomon dedicated the temple. There's over 220,000 bulls offered. Over 100 and nearly 40,000 lambs. And still the people's heart was not right. God will never, never accept a sacrifice of you as long as your heart gets you, as long as your heart ain't right. You can't write in. What tells him, Catherine Hill is mine. If I was hungry, I will kill and eat. The only way God is going to accept, come on now, the sacrifice. He said it. that a broken, come on, and a country heart, he will never, never, never destroy. But you can't pray that you are given all kinds of sacrifice, you're doing all kinds of things, you're killing all kinds of things, you're burning all kinds of things, you're worshiping all kinds of things. It's coming out to the old climate. And the rest coming to take place. You ain't started yet. That is in your heart. Your heart had to match the sacrifices you give in. The sacrifices you are given to God have to be matched by the sacrifice in your heart. You hear what you say? When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will hear, I will not hear. Because your hands are full with blood. It's the same reason David couldn't build the house of God. His hands are full with blood. God is saying, you can pray from now till when. 
You can make as much noise. And that seems to be a passion of a king today. People's heart is not in one accord. And a lot of noise in the church. I think they say that noise means victory. There was a noise. Come on, come, come, come. There was a noise in the camp of Israel. And that noise was not a victorious noise. Because the Philistines went to the ark of God. So don't feel your noise. A lot of people believe the noise and the many prayers. Come on. When you can bribe, when you can bribe people here on this terrestrial board, you cannot bribe God. Get that in your skull. You cannot bribe them. He says, as soul is weary of all these sacrifices. Can handle it. One of the highlights of the Hebrew religious calendar was the new moon festival. Followed by other festivals. The Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Weeks, basically the Passover. People just want to do ritual. And there's a ritual to do with your heart. You want to know the external part of it. Or not the internal part. You say what? You ain't throw you away totally. You haven't thrown us away totally. I put them myself. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. That only for COVID. When the soul is down, it's worse than 11 COVID put together. When God rejects you, it's not an easy thing. Put away the evil of your doing from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Not only cease to do evil, but I can cease to do evil and wickedness. Start, commence, begin to do good. Not just ceasing from evil and standing up in a corner and going back down memory lane. The people you kill and the people you do this and who you do that. There are many people who said they're doing wickedness again, but they rejoice in, they rejoice in going down memory lane. Telling people about all what they do and what they didn't do and, and, and how nice it was and how she ball and how we get on and how we kick up when we get come. God says, cease from doing evil. See some talking about it. Cease, cease. And once you see, you're going to start a new chapter. My message to me. Remember not to forget the invitation. Remember not to forget the invitation. He's saying to you, it's time for you 
to see some doing evil. Learn to do good. You say they are seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Rebuke them. Defend the fatherless. Flee to the widow. These things. are no more to be found. What would you actually say about a country whose justice is for sale? Truth depends on what you can afford. Spirituality is determined by your own ability to pay for it. When you live in a land like that, with these sort of practices, you have to see that that land or the inhabitants of that land has souls is very small. Where even the moral values of a culture are defined in terms of money, then the society is in deep, deep trouble. Judah was a deeply troubled society. You had three categories of leaders. The judges, the priests, and the prophets. They all put their promises up for sale. Hmm. The issue was not that they were being paid in. That was not issue. Obviously, they needed to earn a living, but they had corrupted their offices by allowing money to ex to distort their leadership. Rather than saying what was true, right and just, they said whatever they were paid to see. They grew wealthy from their positions, but their integrity went bankrupt. Hallelujah. This was the case in the day of Isaiah. We saw the minor prophets. God is saying to us today to wash and be clean and to stand up for what is right. You call the streets of Trinidad. You can hardly find a man or woman who is not dependent or who is dependent or should I say who is not dependent on the move of the crowd? There are people who have the cross there, they ride everything, whether it's bad or good. And in most cases, it's bad, it's wickedness. Like when the crowd said, crucify Jesus. Everybody jumped on that bandwagon. <laughs> Stand up to what is right, man. And this is out of faith of the apostles. 
Christianity has taken on those days. They have watered down Christianity like brandy. People doing all kind of stupidness from calling it, calling it holiness. All kind of false, fictitious interpretations of scripture. And how church life is supposed to be. Hallelujah. But do not mistake what I am saying. The true church of God is alive. And all who played monkey check behind a wall with some pews inside of the building holding itself a church. Come and see what is being practiced here. Come and see what they are pal palming off as righteous. The pharmacist is in the house today. The pharmacist is in the house today. The message today, remember not to forget the invitation. The pharmacist is alive and well in verse 18. He said, come now. And let us reason together, says the Lord, with an invitation. Whoever is locked on to the street line 1.9 FM, God is calling. You can kill people like I don't know what. You can rob people. You can be the biggest prostitutes. You can be the biggest corrupted leader. God is calling you today. Don't tell the saint you're too far gone. Yes, they room at the court for millions. So though your sins are like scarlet. This are just white as snow. Let it call. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. What a text. What a text. If you feel you're too far gone, if you feel you're doing something for years now and you cast up. God is calling me. God wants to talk about this with you. He wants to reason with you. Most men say they are five centuries. Well, I beg to disagree. There's one, the sixth one called reasoning on the servant intelligence. God is reasoning with this nation. This nation, her soul is very soul. It behaves now as a harlot. Going to bed with every God. When your husband, Jesus Christ, is just turning up watching. Every Amorite, every Jebusite, every Amakalite, every Roman, the rich Haldan that passed by, you under the green tree, ready to take off your clothes. God is saying, no, no, regardless of what you did, regardless of what life you live in, regardless. He's calling you. He said, come. The message today, remember not to forget the invitation. Don't forget this invitation because you don't know how long again you have. Do not forget this invitation. The dying teeth live a life of robbery. But in the dying hours of his life, he received pardon. Receive forgiveness. And you can also receive it. 
You see, I don't know what I like to call it. He turned water to white. And he gave us a text. The scarlet set. And turned it to snow. He's able to take the thing that is red like crimson and turn it to world. This could be a last opportunity for pharmacists in the house. Hallelujah. And he has brought a recipe today. He has brought a recipe today for souls that are ailing, for souls that are sick and sad, for souls who tell the death. They don't have a ticket going to hell. God will not help them. They do too much. They say too much. Hallelujah. They behave too ungodly. Hallelujah. Tim Jack, this post is telling you, God is a merciful God. He's calling you. I say he's calling you. Remember not to forget the invitation that they're coming from verse 18. Come now, he says. Let us reason together. God, let's show where your grandmother passed down. You got to show where your grandfather passed down. You got to show where your great uncle passed down. You got to show where your culture passed down to you. Hallelujah. Some of you living in some kind of situations. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. It's only God who sees and knows all things. And this is why. This is why you see God. There were four, four particular women in the genealogy of Jesus. And this is why. You see, he's calling you here now. Because he knows where he came from. Jesus. Just knew who were his ancestors. Hallelujah. He knew, he knew about Rahab, the prostitute. He knew about the river. We know about Tamar. Hallelujah. Who went to bed with her father in law. He knew about, hallelujah. He knew about Ruth from Moab, who should not have come between the congregation of Israel up to the 10th generation. He knew about Bathsheba. All of those were at Testers of Jesus Christ. All of those were logically dirty women. All of those were, were women that have checked a check of past. All of those were women. Hallelujah. I heard one woman, hallelujah, that tried to anoint Jesus. The disciples say if he was a prophet, I don't even know what type of woman this is. Hallelujah. He would come on, come, 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 come. Jesus know wherever you went to, whatever you went to, whatever you're going to, he passed through. He Passed through the channels, he passed through the lineage of dirty women, of nasty men. And this is why he understands the situation. And this is why, by extension, he's not running from you or chasing you from him. He's calling you. Come, let us reason together. Come. So you don't care what kind of sin you commit. You don't care what sort of genetics you hooked up to. That's something doctors cannot interfere with. The genetical structure of a man. But Jesus alone, hallelujah, who oh, I love this. Jesus alone could tamper with your genetic, genetic, he, could, he alone could talk with it. It's a magical structure. Something that is hereditary came down from the forefathers down to you. Hallelujah. Some are craving for, for alcohol and cigarettes and craving for sex and, and you just name it. And it passed from one generation to the other to the other. Jesus is saying he has as a pharmacist, he has the antidote. Are you hearing me? I hope somebody's been in prison today. He has the antidote. He said, remember not to forget the invitation. What an invitation. If the queen calls you the book and have palace now, that is a joke. So what Jesus is calling you for right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. What an indication. Are you interested? 
Ah, you insist. Then he went on to say that they take that invitation, verse 19, if you be willing and obedient, he didn't say if you're perfect and obedient, you just have to be willing. You know, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land or heavenly divine Canaan that flows with milk and honey. You shall have to be willing and obedient. Your life could be changed. Your life could transcend to another level. Your failures over the past years was preparation for this new era in your life. If you be only willing and obedient, if you will come to him as a call, with all your sins, with all your sicknesses and illnesses, or your psychopaths, some of you are bandits and killers, some of you have so much gold to the ground, that's at the end. He's saying, come now. Let us reason together. But he went on and was stretching. He said, but then you refuse the invitation. And you rebel. You shall be devoured by the sword. So many have scorned that invitation today. And we see what the sword has done. Don't be another statistic. He's calling you. Come on, all men have sinned and come short of God's glory. None of us born with wings on our shoulders of our back. We all have passed through the canal of nastiness. Jesus has come to clean us up. He cleaned us up with his blood shed on Calvary. And he's calling you this morning. Some backslider. Somebody who will believe in God. Somebody is going through all kind of trouble. Somebody who has courthouse matters. Somebody who has health matters. Somebody who the doctors give up on. Somebody who society give up on. God is calling you. He's calling you. He called me. And I answered him. I said, here I am, Lord. Send me. If you rebel, If you don't want to bow to his scepter, the scepter, it's either you bow to the scepter or you're devoured by the sword. It's one of the two. It's either you accept him as the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and bow to his scepter. I greet all who are bowed to the scepter. And I'm encouraging those of you who refuse to bow to the scepter. Think again and come and bow before him. For every mystery bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Remember, not to forget this invitation. Don't scorn this invitation. Don't let nobody tell you you're qualified. Don't let nobody tell you you're too far gone. Hallelujah. Do not take that talk from nobody. Show them Isaiah chapter 1. Hallelujah. And show them verse 18. Hallelujah. Before that verse, he showed us that we have to come and wash ourselves, clean ourselves. Hallelujah. There are many people running at the side of the road to give food to people. They go to the side of the road. Many people trying to have given and peace and all kind of things. Hallelujah. And the heart that God cannot, I said God has said in his word, he cannot accept it. If God accept that peace, if God accept that thanksgiving, if God that accept it, what you do when you sell the road is bankrupt, hallelujah, and your heart dirty, then God cannot be God. He would not be God. He would not stoop to 
your wind and your punches. You have to climb up to his thunders. He must not come down to yours. Come down. Not tomorrow. Not when you build a house. Not when you're married. Not when the COVID finish. You don't know how soon the bells are told to. You should come now. But by chance, you want to speak further with me. You can get me at 709 5759. That's Bishop Ewan. 709 5759. And if you want programs like this, Lord, the Divine Pat Himself, International Ministry, is on a march right now. You're on on a Thursday night from midnight to five in the air. And you are going to be hearing from Thursday night coming. We are going to, we are dealing with over six million people now. Where your wives in Africa? Where are those linked up now? Millions of people. Have already, you must have proof. This is not a ministry that is going to sit down here and get strictly that room is burning. Go into the world and preach my everlasting gospel. Preach the witches and warlocks, more some strength. Let people know that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Making disciples of men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you in the scriptures. Lo, I am with you always. Hallelujah. Bless God. I do know if we have time. If we have time, we can call 342 If you have anything to say, we just have a couple minutes again. I can reach and thank God today for the opportunity to be the mouthpiece. Thank God to be in your homes, in your vehicles, in your offices today, wherever you may have looked on. God has sent a message to you. Hallelujah. It had to be preached to me first before it came to you. Hallelujah. Then by chance to me, you are in a tight spandex monkey pants. Hallelujah. It's time. To accept this royal invitation. This is a royal, heavenly, divine invitation. Come, let us raise them together. Says the Lord. May God bless you. If you don't have that time, 342 we could call. If not, until next week, Tuesday, please God. On part Tuesday night from midnight to 5 in the a.m. and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12. Maybe. May God bless and keep you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God today. This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine Problem Solving International Ministries inviting you to be part of our broadcast on any given Thursday night from 12 midnight right on to 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And this broadcast is called Early Morning Gospel Market Program. Then we have on Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. the Holy Ghost Gospel Pharmacy. If you are sick and ailing, you can get from this particular pharmacy from the pharmacist the good things of life. Hallelujah any Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon, break into the house of the Philistines. Hallelujah. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, hearing the Babel of false doctrines that you encounter daily, it's about time you get close to God, God's word, direct from his throne room in the name of Jesus. God has good plans for his people. Why do you worry so much? This is Bishop Aaron Williams from the Divine.